click the record button. And thank you all for clicking whatever buttons Zoom asks you to click. And uh, as Mariella, I believe it was a while ago, or some mindfulness teacher that I've had has reminded me um, that the point of this is not to have a good sit, even though I hope we all do have pleasant sits. However, I hope that we all get the meditation sit that we need today. I certainly hope that I get the sit that I need today. Yeah. And so with that, I will pass it over to you, Mariella. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. And again, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. We're going to practice for about 20 minutes or so. So if you'd like to find a comfortable position, something that feels relaxed, alert, if you want to keep your camera on or off, allow yourself to be whatever makes you feel most comfortable. Also, if you want to lower the gaze or close your eyes, I'll ring the bell one time to sign the beginning of practice and three times at the end of practice. I want to start by taking a couple of deeper breaths. As you inhale through the nose, invite the body to soften. Softening the muscles in the face, dropping down the shoulders, softening the jaw. With your next exhale, releasing any tension that you are aware that is present right now. Taking a moment to also orient yourself in the space you're in by noticing sounds that are around you. Noticing smells, the temperature of the room you're in. Bringing awareness now to sensations in the body. Feeling the different points of contact of the body with the chair, the cushion, the sofa, whatever object you are sitting or laying down on. See if you can notice sensations in the back. The seat bones area.
sensations in the legs, in the soles of the feet. I'd like to invite you to also take a moment to acknowledge the earth underneath your feet. The earth holding you. As we also celebrate today, Earth Day. Taking a moment to acknowledge the earth holding each of us. And for the next few moments, just resting in the awareness of being alive in this body. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Just simply being here, bring an attitude of curiosity. And a kind of tension as you Notice what is it like to be human? What is it like to inhabit this human body? And to the best of your abilities, not judging this moment. Recognizing what's here and allowing this moment to be exactly as it is. See if you can also notice what does it feel like to be breathing. And direct your attention to the breath. And rest the attention in whichever part of the body needs the easiest to experience the breath right now. That may be on the tip of the nostrils, as you notice the air coming in through the nostrils and air leaving the body. Maybe you notice the breath more strongly in the rising and falling of the chest, the sensations in the chest. Perhaps the belly area. And just rest the attention in any of those parts of the body or whichever else you experience the breath more strongly now.
And if for any reason the breath doesn't feel like a safe place right now, know that that's okay. You can pass the attention in another part of the body, maybe the soles of the feet. But if you can, noticing the breath. Feeling the breath. Feeling the different characteristics of the breath. Is it deep or shallow? Maybe smooth or choppy. Perhaps it's hard to identify the breath and that's okay too. If that's the case, maybe you can bring awareness to another part of the body or See if you can deepen the attention to find the breath in the body. See if you can feel the aliveness of this body with each breath. And again, also for a moment, acknowledging the interconnectedness of us with the earth. Inhale the oxygen produced by the trees. And what we offer back to earth. And as the body continues to breathe, I'd like to invite you now to expand the attention to the whole entire body. Feeling the body from head to toes. And just for a moment, I can notice what is it like to be alive in this body? What sensations are present in the physical body? You may notice sensations that are pleasant. 
sensations are unpleasant. Neutral sensations. So just simply acknowledging and to the best of your abilities, allowing them to be here. You may have already become aware of the activity of the mind. Just also taking a moment to acknowledge the mental world. Uh, to engage with the content of the mind, but just to simply acknowledge uh, thinking is happening. See if you can notice how thoughts come and go. Each phenomenon happening. You may also notice emotions that are present. Taking a moment to also acknowledge what's in the emotional world, what emotions are present. If you like, you can place one or two hands on the chest area and connecting with the heart. And again, just as a way to acknowledge what's here, what emotions are present. To the best of your abilities, allowing them to be here. Creating a little bit of space to hold this whole totality of what is it like to be you, to be human. That that you call yourself. It's all welcome in this space. Not one part is left behind. As we acknowledge that these moments, this experience, it's all phenomenal coming and passing by. This moment, this experience is impermanent. It's always changing.
Taking a moment to see if anything has changed from beginning of practice to now. And as we approach the end of this practice, I'd like to invite you to bring attention to gratitude and find something that you can be grateful for, perhaps a part of the body, person, event, an object, a pet. Notice how gratitude feels in the body. And also take a moment and find gratitude for yourself for having made the time to be here. You could have been doing something completely different, but you chose to be here. Showing up for myself in this way and sitting with myself in this way. Feels like an act of radical love and the beginning of radical acceptance. Perhaps this resonates with you as well. I'm going to ring the bell, see if you can continue bringing awareness to the present moment, making the rest of the seat, this time together, the rest of your day, a continuation of your practice where you continue bringing curiosity, kind of attention, and non judgmental awareness. coming back to the screen thank you all for your practice for being here welcome to those of you that join us halfway through the seat and we'll now pass it on to Brian and our wonderful guest speaker Patrick thank you I say thanks so much, Mariella, for leading us in that wonderful set. <clears throat> well, and hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to those who join mid-sit. And uh, we are still our the Inside LA Mindfulness and Deep Suffering Practice Group. We're a practice group, an affinity group. We like to call this the HOPE group. And HOPE uh, is an acronym that stands for Healing Ourselves Through the Present Experience healing ourselves to the present experience. And so glad to be welcoming back a regular teacher here, the wonderful Patrick. And Patrick, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being so awesome. Thanks for being an awesome guy. I'm so grateful for our friendship over these many years. And <laughs> it's nice to have people that, uh, for me, it's really nice to have people in my life that I can be serious and silly with. Yeah, yeah. And Patrick, for those that uh, have read about or have seen Patrick before, Patrick 
Um, speaking, speaking about you in the third person, <laughs> Patrick, I don't know if you know this, you are an amazing person. You have vast experience in the suicide prevention space. Uh, Patrick is also a senior Dharma teacher in the Zen tradition, has sat more than a hundred retreats, uh, a gifted musician, husband, father, just an all around great guy. And thank you so much, Patrick, for being here to share with us about pain and uh, the what, yeah, yeah. And so I'm really looking forward to today. Um, and so thank you, my friend, sending you lots and lots and lots of love over to you. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, you know, pain is uh, something that we're all familiar with. A, a while back, I did a a talk on um, on suffering and like the you know, Buddhism. They kind of break down suffering into three kinds of suffering. Um, and so I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about that for a second, but. Um, you know, so the, the three types of suffering that kind of gets broken down to are uh, the suffering of suffering, right? Which is, uh, you know, the suffering of birth, the suffering of sickness, the suffering of getting old, the suffering of dying. Um, the second kind of suffering is the suffering of impermanence or the suffering of change. So... You know, no matter what we have, we lose. You know, whether that is a, a good experience, whether that's an enjoyable afternoon with friends and family, you know, we, we have a have a great time, but eventually that has to end. Whether that is, you know, all this all this kind of like, you know, in our, our sort of Western capitalist culture, you know, kind of work to sort of get ahead in life you know we gotta get money if we can just get this promotion if we can just get this if we can get this uh living situation if we can get this raise if we can get this money or whatever you know we have this sense that okay well that that's gonna make me happy but really all that subject to change and we lose that no matter what we get we lose it eventually um so that's the suffering of impermanence um, and then the third one is um, this kind of uh, talk about as kind of being all pervasive suffering, which is just this sort of like very, it's the hardest to recognize. It's this sort of subtle undercurrent of uh, unease, of uh, like a subtle anxiety, and this sense that there's really nowhere solid for us to stand in this life, right? Because Whatever, whatever we get, whatever good experience, you know, we're gonna we're gonna lose. So it's this kind of constant feel of unease. So in Zen, we say the great way is not difficult for those who do not make bad or good. And this pretty much this very simple and pithy sort of teaching encompasses so much that you know that that's it's so vast all of these kinds of suffering what they all have in common is dislike or dislike right we have we have something we like this but we can't hold it right? so then we get its opposite and we don't like that so whether it's physical pain emotional pain mental pain whatever kind of pain it is that you're feeling, right? There's always this sense of, I don't want this. I want to get rid of this. I need to, I want to push this away somehow, right? Um, and that, that actual reaction is really what becomes so painful. Because as much as we're trying to get rid of it, as much as we think of it as like we're trying to push this away, we're trying to get rid of it, what we're actually doing is holding it, right? We're, we're making it solid. We're making it finite. So even though we're trying to push it away, 
for holding it to us. And then the reason this hurts so much is because our true nature is open. Our true nature is uh, expansive and uh, spontaneously luminous, compassionate. And this holding is in direct contradiction to our true nature, and that's why it, it hurts so much. That's why we suffer so much. Um, you know, so I, I recognize that sometimes talking about pain in this way, suffering in this way, can sound like we're kind of making light of it, or that um, we're saying that suffering is all in your mind and it's your fault, right? And so I just want to say that's not what I'm saying here, you know. Um, the suffering that you all feel, the suffering that I feel, you know, that suffering is is real to us. That suffering is difficult and painful, and it's not easy to move through that. And it's not easy to just like, oh, I'll just let go, right? And everything's fine. Um, it doesn't, doesn't really work like that. And that's why we have this practice, and that's why practice is so important. Um, because this tendency to grasp, this tendency to hold this pain, to make those likes and dislikes, and to try to push away our experience, try to push away the experiences that we we don't want, and to try to like, you know, hold on to the things that we do want. Like that that habit is so ingrained in us, and it goes back so 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 far, right? Um, so a practice is very necessary, you know because most of the time we're doing this at a level that we're not really super aware of. So we have to make this, we have to become aware of this, right? So, you know, in Buddhism, the, the first noble truth is the truth of suffering. And so many of us come to meditation, come to Buddhism, come to whatever various practice we, we do, because what we're trying to do is get rid of suffering, right? Um, but the first noble truth is the truth of suffering. So that means we need to really get to know intimately our suffering. That means we need to, in effect, sort of welcome it and be curious about it. And as best we can, be open about it and see what it has to teach us, what it has to show us. Um, and that's not, that's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, so community is very important. You know, sangha. It's very important. That's why Sangha is one of the three jewels, because we all support each other in this practice, right? Um, so, you know, I know there's some of you who have a lot of physical pain. Um, you know, so physical pain is something that uh, I'll, I'll just kind of share with you some stuff I've been dealing with a little bit. Um, physical pain is something that I've been dealing with for most of my life, um, I have a very uh, particular circulatory system. I don't have the main vein in my heart. Um, I have only one kidney, and I have all these kind of veins that sort of grew themselves to sort of take over, you know, for the, the veins that I'm missing. Um, and so I've always had like all these different pains and stuff like that. And, I didn't really know what these were for the longest time. You know, I just thought this was part of being a person, right? I just thought this was someone else that everybody always had because it's always something that I've had and I didn't know any different. Um, and it's interesting because recently I went to the doctor and, you know, at the behest of my uh, primary care physician, I went to see this this uh, vein specialist and, you know, they did all these scans and tests and, you know, they were like, <laughs> um, yeah, we don't really understand how you're alive. We don't understand how you're here. They're like, are you able to like walk upstairs by yourself? <laughs> like all this kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, what, what are you talking about? You know, I'm fine. Um, 
And so then, you know, talking to them and kind of figuring out what's going on, and I realized that all this sort of pain that I've always had is like all the all the blood on my body going the wrong direction for like seven seconds. So it all backs up and creates all this pressure and pain. Um, and something very interesting happened. So when I when I kind of learned this, you know, all of a sudden there was like some fear, right? So I've been dealing with this my whole life. I just never really thought of it. Because I was like, oh, this is just being a person, right? This is just what it is to be a person. Everybody feels shit like this. So now it's like, oh, no, that's not being a person. No, there's something wrong with you, right? So now I've got this thinking attached to, like, this feeling, right? Something wrong with you. Something needs to be fixed, Okay. So now all of a sudden, you know, like I, I have these pains. Like, oh God, what if, you know, is it gonna? Well, my blood vessels gonna burst? Is my heart gonna explode? <laughs> you know, like all these kind of thoughts come up in your head, right? You know, and so then, then the, the pain becomes like something else. It becomes like something like, oh, I don't want this, right? So then it's kind of like, well, wait a minute. This is like this is not new. You know, this is not new for me. So what's different? And it, it really is this thinking, okay? And the reason that I bring this up, you know, is because that component is consistent with all of our suffering, whatever kind of suffering you're going through, okay? Whether that is physical pain, whether that is emotional pain, you know, whether it's the mental pain, you know, like as Brian, Brian talks about, you know, we talked to a lot to a lot of people who were thinking of suicide, right? And something that I see a lot is, you know, maybe someone is struggling with some anxiety. They're having a difficult time in their life, right? And then, you know, this thinking comes up, right? I don't want this pain. I, I want out of this. I should just kill myself. Oh, shit. That's really scary. Okay, I don't, I don't want to think that, right? And, you know, like I, the example I, I, you know, I always use with people, it's like, if I tell you not to think of a like a duck on water skis, don't think of a duck on water skis. What immediately pops into your head is a picture of a fucking duck on water skis, right? Like you, you can't help it. So we're trying to push this thought away, like oh, don't think of suicide. No, don't don't have that thought. Don't have that thought. But then it just it keeps coming up, keeps coming up, and then there's this panic, and then there's this feeling of. I have no control. I have no control over my life. Oh my God. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stop myself. I don't, you know, and it builds and builds and builds and the emotion builds and the thoughts build and the emotions build and the thoughts build. And then we just, you know, we're in a full blown crisis. Right. And I see this a lot and it all comes back to this, right. It all comes back to that, that thinking. Right. You know, and, um, and Buddhism, you know, there's there's a lot of like you hear like some people say like the root of all all suffering is desire, right? Um, and in Buddhism, you know that 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 is a definitely an expression of that. That's where we kind of make this uh, like and dislike, right? But the real the real root of suffering is our dualistic thinking. And when people say dualistic thinking, you know, often we think of like, okay, there's me and there's you. There's this and there's that. There's inside, there's outside, right? And that is dualistic thinking. But the kind of dualistic thinking that really causes the suffering is this, I am in pain, right? And the pain is different from I. So I has this pain. This pain is happening to I. It's happening to me, right? So already there's, there's already those two things, okay? But if we can return back, we can let that go. And really, you know, this is just, we have an awareness. There's an awareness of maybe some feeling, some emotion, some thought, whatever it is, right? But this awareness, uh, the, the pain itself is not, it's not self. It's not permanent, right? 
So the practice is, you know, again, coming back and being curious. Okay, what is this? What is this? What is it that makes this painful experience painful? What is it that's actually hurting? You know, that's a, that seems obvious, you know, like if we stub our toe, we're like, well, my fucking toe hurts. That's what, that's what's hurting. What do you mean? Right. But if we really examine the experience, you know, it's not even localized to our toe, right? How are we experiencing that pain? You know, is it, is this pain finite? Does it change? Does it come? Does it go? And the more and more we work with it, the more and more we can learn to be open with it, the more we see that, you know, this this painful continuity that we think we have, right? Because when we're, we're in habitual pain, when we're in a lot of pain, we, we think of it as just like this straight line. It's always there. I can't get rid of it. It's always there. It's always like present. I can't escape it. And that makes us feel so powerless. But the more we look at it, more and more we see that there's gaps, there's changes, there's ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not there at all, right? But we think of it as just this straight line, you know? So on this, um, you know, along with the, all this stuff going on with my circulation, I, I started doing, uh, <laughs> it's kind of silly, but started doing these um like in the morning they'll do like ice 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 baths um because it is proven to be really helpful for your circulation um so you know i live i live in colorado where it's cold i don't even need ice because I, I have this tub outside and it's every morning i walk out and it's like you know covered in snow and i have to break up the ice it's frozen over in the night and, you know, I'm not advocating this for anybody. It's, uh, but it's a very interesting experience, right? So, like, you know, before you get in there, kind of like, just trying to, like, sort of breathe, follow my breathing, you know. This morning I went out and did it, and it was, it was snowing as I'm doing it, and I'm standing out there and kind of feeling ridiculous. You know, and you, you get in, right? And, you know, the part of the trick is just to, like, when you get in, when you get in really cold water, your breath kind of seizes up, right? And your breath gets all caught up here, just like when you're, just like when you have, like, a lot of anxiety, like when you have a lot of emotional pain, <laughs> you know, gets caught up here. Um, so, you know, the trick is to, like, continually sort of breathe through it. You know, and even though the experience is super uncomfortable, you still, like, keep that relaxed, natural breath. You know, and you sink down into it. And, you know, when I get in there, every cell in my body just, like, wants to panic. You know, because, you know, you're submerged in this ice water. It's snowing. You just feel silly. You know, and your body is like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? Um... But so the more and more, you know, you kind of look at it, you follow your breathing. And for me, like, I, I don't know how other people do it, but like, I, I look at the experience of like discomfort. I look at the experience of cold, right? I look at that like kind of like being super cold is kind of, it's really painful, you know? If I look at that, you know, I'm curious about it. And what is it that is actually so unpleasant about this experience? What is it that's painful about this experience? So doing that, you know, it, it sort of creates this this space. You know, if you've if you've come to any of my talks, you know, like Zen we talk about don't know. Okay, and this don't know mind is our mind before all of our discursive dualistic thinking, you know, so we'll come back, you know, just that moment, right? That moment, there's no inside, no outside, 
no this, that, no self, other. There's only, right? So this is don't know. Okay, so you come back to this again and again and again. And in that moment, in that space, there's room for everything, right? We're not pushing anything away. We're not grasping anything. We're not trying to hold some good experience, right? You know, sometimes, like, when I'm in there, you know, there are, there are moments where, like, the pain, the, like, discomfort changes to, oh, this is nice, right? But you don't hold that either, right? You don't hold on to, like, oh, this feels good. Because the moment you do that, and that changes, and all of a sudden you're in opposition to what's happening, and then that's where that pain comes from. So, I recognize that you know this is not this is not easy. Working with our emotional pain, working with our physical pain, our mental pain. Um, in no way am I making light of the the difficulty involved with that. But all of you have, as your true nature, just openness, okay? There's not, there's not anyone here that doesn't have that. There's not anyone on this earth that doesn't have that, right? Your true self is open. Your true self is aware. Your true self is naturally compassionate. So... It's just a matter of returning again and again and again in these little moments. And I always, you know, I recognize I always sound like a broken record, you know, giving these talks. But that's that's what's necessary. And I, all my teachers sound like broken records too, <laughs> right? Because that's what it takes. Come back again and again and again. And we forget again and again and again. So we all, we all need constant reminder, okay, to be gentle with yourself, all right, to try not to, to judge your pain, to try not to judge your suffering, you know, that, that dualistic expression, right, of like, I shouldn't be feeling this, I shouldn't be having this, I don't want this, right, there's no me and this, right, that's only like, there's this experience. There's an awareness of this experience. There's no I, there's no me that's having this experience. This is just what it is, right? And all these, all these painful experiences, all these like good experiences, whatever we want to call them, whether we like them or don't like them, you know, they all arise out of like causes and conditions coming together, right? Past causes current condition coming together and that creates this experience you know so what is there to like what is there to dislike you know I guess you know to wrap it up like I would just encourage you all to just be curious about your pain be curious about your suffering again first noble truth is suffering you need to get to know suffering, okay? That means, what is this? Where, where is this? Is this real? Is this is it constant? Does it change? What is painful about this? Who is experiencing this? Okay? So we return to that again, to that curiosity, and we, we'll get pulled away. We'll get pulled away and then pulled into the trap of trying to push away, you know, or grasping, pushing and grasping. You know, again and again, we get pulled into that. And when you recognize that you've gotten pulled into that, that you're trying to push your pain away, you recognize that you're feeling powerlessness, you recognize that you're feeling out of control, right? Because you have this pain that you can't get rid of. Take a moment, okay, recognize that. Remember remember this, this talk, I guess. And see if you can just be curious about it. Okay, what is this? What hurts about this? Okay, so that's very simple and very complicated. 
and very, very easy and very difficult all at once, right? So, you know, I hope that we all just continue to show up for each other, support each other. None of you are in this alone. Um, you know, I don't know you all, um, but I, I honestly like have a love, a lot of love for you all. You know, because we all have the same experience, the same human experience, right? And I've often felt like, you know, sitting in retreats or whatever, sitting long retreats with people, you know, the, the retreats are silent. You know, you don't talk for months. And um, so, you know, you don't know anything really about a lot of people, about their actual lives, about like the, you know, the accoutrements of their lives, right? You don't know about their jobs, about their family, about their relationships, about this or about that. You know them very intimately without ever saying anything because there's there's nothing more intimate. There's nothing more human than just sitting together, practicing in silence and asking, what is this? What does it mean to be a human being? What is this pain? How can I help? So with that, um, I hope that all of you will uh, give a lot of energy to your practice. And I hope that you can all be curious and gentle with yourselves. And I hope you all keep coming back. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you so much. As always, let me turn off the recording.